Excellent. Um, so I took the liberty of uh, framing my presentation around um, NSF's year of open science, because I think it brings together a lot of themes that I think are really being uh, promoted at this current CSDMS meeting. That said, I won't cover every single update that is occurring at NSF. So I am here through Friday. Please feel free to approach me if you have any questions throughout the meeting. Um, I just wanted to begin by introducing myself. As Arena mentioned, I am a program director in the geoinformatics program, which is in the Division of Earth Sciences, so you were correct. Um, the geoinformatics program, we support cyber infrastructure that includes uh, data capabilities, uh, model and software capabilities, and other cyber capabilities toward the advancement of earth science research and education. Um, among the things we support includes the CSDMS uh, facility, and we're very pleased to have supported the renewal of CSDMS last year uh, for a five-year period. Uh, it's really exciting for me to be here. You know, I've, I've learned about a lot of these new innovations of CSDMS on paper, and now actually seeing it in practice through uh, the, the ESPN, through the clinics, through all these various activities is really exciting to see. So thank you so much for sharing that. And I'll also note, actually, the first time I attended the CSDMS meeting was as a student. So it's really interesting to come full circle now as the NSF program manager. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to focus on the year of open science. Um, uh, last year, the White House issued a memo called the Nelson Memo. Uh, which uh, advances principles of uh, equitable, trustworthy, and collaborative science. And this is across the federal science space, so not just in the geosciences or not just NSF. Um, and the memo they issued, um, which I'll talk about in a subsequent slide, um, uh, promoted advancement in the public access to uh, articles and uh, research products uh, generated through uh, federally funded research. Following on this memo at the beginning of 2023, uh, the White House declared the Federal Year of Open Science. NSF is one of the participants in that. Um, and they uh, provided this definition of open science, which is the principle and practice of making research products and processes available to all while respecting diverse cultures, maintaining security and privacy, and fostering collaborations, reproducibility, and equity. Um, and I'll just note that that seems to be very resonant with a lot of the themes I'm hearing here at the CSDMS meeting. So I'm really excited to, to see the work that's occurring here. Um, from the perspective of the Directorate of, Earth, of, Directorate of Geosciences at NSF, in which the Division of Earth Sciences sits, uh, there's also an intellectual interest in open science as a mechanism for um, increasingly uh, integrative and interdisciplinary approaches to Earth system science. Um, furthermore, you know, we're seeing within research communities the advancement of these principles for open science these include the FAIR principles, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, uh, the CARE principles uh, for uh, indigenous data sovereignty, uh, trusted principles for digital repositories, and principles of reproducibility and replicability. Um, so with that in mind, there are some ongoing policy changes at NSF. Uh, setting some background here in 2013, the Office of Science and Technology Policy issued this memo called the Holdren Memo. Uh, which directed agencies to develop public access plans toward making peer-reviewed articles and digital data uh, available to the public. But this uh, former memo allowed for a one-year embargo period um, during which uh, researchers could make these products accessible. And it focused specifically on publications. There were less strings attached to research data. In response, NSF in 2015 published its public access plan um, directing that articles from NSF-funded research be posted on this NSF public access repository, either as the author accepted manuscript, which is basically the unformatted version of the paper, or the version of record if that paper were uh, publicly accessible on the publisher's website. Then in 2022, OSTP issued this Nelson memo, which I described in opening, um, which called on agencies to update their public access plans, uh, calls now for immediate, free, and equitable public access to federally funded research products. And crucially, uh, on the paper front, calls for a zero embargo period instead of that one-year embargo period, as well as the data underlying those articles being immediately accessible at the time of publication. In response, NSF has developed a public access plan 2.0. This plan was submitted to OSTP in February. I actually think the release of the plan is imminent, like in the next few days or, or weeks. 
at the latest. Um, I will note that this plan is simply a blueprint for what will happen in the next few years. There's no immediate policy changes at NSF, but in maybe the next two to three year time frame, you will see policies changing for NSF grantees. Um, so the infrastructure underlying this um, public access policy, I mentioned it's this public access repository. Version one, which was launched in 2016, a focus on the deposit of peer reviewed articles resulting from NSF funded research. In 2021, a new capability was established allowing PIs on NSF grants to index the data sets resulting from their papers. This is currently an optional functionality, but likely to become more mandated uh, with the new public access plan. We also understand that with these new requirements for public access, there is also the need for infrastructure and support. Uh, we had this program last year called the FAROS RCNs, that stands for FAIR, Principles Findable, Accessible, Interoperable, Reusable, and Open Science Research Coordination Networks. Uh, 10 of these projects were funded. I'll highlight two here, which have a focus in the geosciences, one was on AI readiness, uh, reproducibility and fair principles uh, for applications of machine learning. Another was on fair facilities and instruments. So looking at the fair principles as they relate to uh, use of, of instrumentation and research. We also last year had a dear colleague letter on the principles and practice of reproducibility and replicability in science. There's a QR code here where you can learn more about public access efforts. And at the end, I'll blow up the QR code again so you can access that. Um, another place I'd like to focus now is specifically on the director of, of geosciences, which includes earth science, atmospheric science, ocean science, and polar science. Our big investment over the past 10 years, with which many of you are probably familiar, is the EarthCube program, uh, which has made you know, significant strides toward increasing interoperability and improving technology across the geosciences for data access. Uh, now we're kind of in the next phase of new funding opportunities. One of those a dear colleague letter issued, uh, I think it was earlier this year, focuses on applications of artificial intelligence and machine learning in the geosciences. This is for projects that are submitted through core research programs. And we also have this new solicitation, the Geo Open Science Ecosystem, uh, which I'll talk about in the next slide. Um, so this is a, a program that kind of acknowledges all of these various developments in the open science world. Uh, the, the Federal Year of Open Science, and seeks to advance several priorities, uh, which includes advancing the openness and scientific value of cyber infrastructure, democratizing access to these capabilities, including via cloud-based approaches, um, strengthening the capacity of geoscientists to access these resources, and advancing these principles like FAIR principles, care, trust, reproducibility, et cetera. I will note that there is a very complicated landscape of funding opportunities at NSF. Uh, and I apologize that it's not easier to navigate. You know, part of it just relates to the bureaucracy of how we get things approved. Uh, but we are trying to think systematically about how these various funding opportunities fit together. I mentioned this GOOSE program, which is kind of the linchpin of, of efforts across um, the geosciences. But we also have uh, within, if you look at the top left, uh, within the geosciences director, we have these core programs like geoinformatics in the earth science division. We have a polar cyber infrastructure program in the, the polar science division. Um, we also have an office of advanced cyber infrastructure that is kind of more focused on the innovation of new capabilities. Um, so for example, the CSSI program is what supported the, the open earthscape project, which is linked to the CSDMS facility. Uh, we have these NSF-wide initiatives like the Pharos RCNs. Uh, we have a new Directorate of Technology, Innovation, and Partnerships, which is focused on taking uh, research advancements and translating them into more applied uh, areas, whether that's in business or whether it's in um, kind of more management applications. Uh, and then we acknowledge these uh, efforts across the federal government, many agencies participating in the Year of Open Science, the NASA uh, Transformed Open Science Initiative, the USGS uh, Community for Data Integration. And so we're increasingly thinking about how all these pieces fit together, but of course, they acknowledge it's confusing and so welcome questions at any time. Um, so just a few closing thoughts uh, here, uh, just reiterating how open science is now a priority at NSF and across the federal government. We see a big challenge right now. We, we think we understand the principles that need to be achieved 
but how do we put those into practice? And so I think communities like CSDMS are really good for, for working through those challenges. Um, and again, it's not one single funding opportunity, but it's kind of a, a constellation of different activities that we hope to, to move us toward that goal. Um, and so that concludes my talk and I'll just leave you with these QR codes so you can learn more about these funding opportunities on the left, public access initiatives on the right. There are also NSF Year of Open Science bookmarks I put on the table uh, in the lobby if you're interested in um, having a little swag to take home with you. Um, so thank you. Is there a pressing overarching question for Valley on the year for open science and NSF opportunities? Thank you. 